Information Processing Theory Previously, we introduced the stages of the information processing theory. It begins with the incoming of information from our environment. We're exposed to thousands of stimulus every second through our sensory memory. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching are all ways our brains intake information. If we decide to pay attention to certain stimuli, it moves into our short-term memory, also known as our working memory, as it's the place where we process information. In order for information to be stored in our long-term memory and formally learned, the information must be elaborated on through rehearsal to consolidate the new data. We can then organize new information into existing knowledge sets, if information is similar to prior information, or create a completely new knowledge st structure if the new information is unlike anything we've experienced before. Once information is stored in our long-term memory, we can later recall this information back into our working memory to compare to incoming information or help elaborate on our knowledge experiences. So how can we apply the information processing theory to education? Well, there's five steps teachers can take to support students in the acquisition of new information. The first step is reception to ensure teachers gain students' attention using an abrupt stimulus change to focus students' sensory memory on the lesson. Next, retrieval, where educators should stimulate recall of prior learning and skills from students' long-term memory into their working memory. Students are then ready to receive information transmitted by the teacher that should have distinctive features and suggest a meaningful organization of ideas for the students. Perhaps most importantly, students should elicit performance from students so they can experience the information for themselves to absorb knowledge into their pre-existing knowledge sets. And finally, teachers should provide ongoing feedback to students and especially give them additional performance opportunities to apply the feedback. Reception, retrieval, receive, respond, reinforce. These are the five R's for remembering. These five stages are familiar ideas in education. Teachers often start a lesson with a warm-up activity or hook to gain the attention of students. Encourage pupils to retrieve prior learning by recalling the main ideas from the previous lesson. Transmit key information to students before guiding students through a hands-on learning task or lesson, all the while continuously giving feedback to support learners. Perhaps most important in these stages is giving students the opportunity to respond to new information, as this increases the likelihood that information will be stored in long-term memory. So now I want to give you a chance to respond to the new information that's just been presented to you in this video. Think back. How were the first three stages of remembering modeled in this lesson? You may need to pause the video to take a moment to think back. If we look back to the model presented earlier, we can see that the last stage is to reinforce an accurate understanding of new information by providing ongoing feedback to students. This sort of individualized feedback is very difficult to do for my one-sided video, so instead I'll briefly run through some possibilities you may have identified. I'll begin with reception, which was represented by the pulsing brain and unusual audio sounds. Next, retrieval was encouraged through a quick walkthrough of the information processing model learned previously to pull this information from your long-term memory into your working memory. Once prepped for learning, you then receive new information about the five R's for remembering. This information was presented in a visually appealing manner with hints that the stages are part of an ongoing learning cycle. I also attempted to relate this information to knowledge that you most likely already had concerning lesson structures. Finally, I use repetition, repetition, repetition by repeating keywords, color schemes, and visual frameworks to encourage rehearsal of the new information. The last stage of the model says that students need additional performance opportunities to be able to apply the feedback from their teachers. And this brings us back to our key question from the beginning of this lesson. How do we apply the information processing theory to a lesson? 
So to begin, I'd like you to use the five R's for remembering to think of a lesson that you've taught in the past or are very familiar with. You may need to pause the video for more time. Now that you have your lesson broken down into the five stages, I want you to elaborate on how the two models shown in this video are interconnected. Explain which stage of the information processing theory is engaged during each stage of your lesson. You can show your understanding with a visual representation, text summary, or a quick vlog, whatever works best for you.